All right, so um, John chapter 4. And this story is a phenomenal story. Some of you guys maybe already have heard this story. But here's Jesus, and he's about to encounter this young lady, a Samaritan woman, who is considered unworthy. He was considered, casted out, no one, she's just not worthy to be talked to, not even in her own circle. And here he comes and he speaks to her, this divine word, and it goes from uh, John chapter 4, verse 1. And Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John, though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. Verse 4, he had to go through Samaria on the way, and eventually he came to the Samaritan village near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, uh, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. And the woman was so surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a, uh, for a drink? And Jesus replied, if you only knew. I want you to title this, this message tonight is, if you only knew. If you only knew the gift of God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. I want to tell you, all of us that is in this place and those that may be watching, we're on a journey, journey of life. We are in search for our identity, for our individuality, for our purpose, for a meaning of life. In some way, shape, or form, all of us are looking for an answer for our lives, a purpose. And some of us are in a different walk of life tonight. Maybe some of you guys are just beginning to believe in Jesus Christ. Maybe you already been believing for 25, 10, however long years, but somehow you're in the path of discovering. And I want to let you know one thing is that I want to just reflect when you heard those testimonies here just a second ago is that Jesus Christ wants to encounter you. He doesn't care where you're at tonight, whatever situation it may be, he wants to encounter you. When I was 14 years old, that was the first time I encountered Jesus Christ and I was never the same. I can't tell you what happened or explain every single detail, but I just know that when he encountered me, I was never the same. And when I talk to people and when they ask me about my walk with God or when they're in search for just finding the answer to life, I just say, you know what, just pray and ask God to encounter you. Maybe you're cold, maybe you're bitter, maybe you're just not wanting to forgive or you're holding on to the past or maybe something's just going on with you. I want to ask you to ask Jesus to encounter you because when that happens, you will never, ever be the same. You won't be able to explain it to anybody. See, some of us here tonight are trying to change ourselves. We're trying to become better. We're trying to say, you know, I need to steer away from that or go away from that. And you're trying to get better so you can get closer to God. But I want to tell you, when you encounter him, everything else changes. You don't have to change it. It just comes out through that change. Amen? Through him encountering you with his presence, something happens inside of you. And you don't know how to explain it. Just like when Jesus healed that blind man. And then those Pharisees came to him and said, what happened? Isn't he, Jesus a sinner? He says, I don't know if he is a sinner. But all I know is that I was blind, but now I see. Amen. And when he encounters you, just like the Samaritan woman that we're going to unveil the story tonight. When he encounters you, you'll begin to see life in a different way. Some of you guys are experiencing that right now. I hear testimonies. Some of you guys are just unveiling the journey that God has for you. And what's happening to you is those minor, minor encounters, those moments with Jesus, you will never be the same. And that's where your faith will be your foundation. Amen. So as we're talking tonight and as we're going and you're coming here to the services or you might take something with you, ask Jesus to encounter you. You don't have to understand everything and that's okay, but at least ask him to encounter you. However it may be, he knows how to touch you. Amen. And so he knew how to touch this lady. He knew to ask uh, how to start this conversation. She knew that she was not worthy of anyone's time. 
And as he continues on to say, um, verse 10, he said, Jesus replied, if you only knew, turn to your neighbor and say, if you only knew. If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. As I was mentioning about the encounter, if you only knew what God had for you, you would stop searching for everywhere else. If you only knew what he had for you, that he, just with one touch, you would never be the same. That he has a gift for you, and that is the Holy Spirit. And when he touches you, they will never be the same. So if you only knew that you are the child of God, you know that you would walk in confidence, knowing that you carry a purpose, and that you're searching for every avenue from your friends, from your girlfriend, boyfriends, every walk of your life. If you only knew that you are the child of the Most High God, you would live a life just a little bit differently. Because he said this one thing to her, uh, or she said back to him, said, but sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket? She said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, don't you think you're great? Do you think you are greater than our ancestors, Jacob, who gave us this well? You know, the funniest thing is, is that have you ever challenged Jesus? Did you ever challenge maybe a leader that was telling you, you know what, God is the answer? Have you ever challenged the thought of Christianity? Saying, do you really think that Jesus Christ is the greatest of them all? Do you really think that Jesus is the number one answer? Some of us have thought that or even actually asked that to someone. And she did that. She challenged Jesus' words. She said, do you think that you're actually greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? See, that well that she was drawing from was her source for the longest time. See, she needed water to continue on, right? She was thirsty. She constantly went to that well to receive that living wa- that water. And she's saying, do you think that you are greater than this living water? See, some of you guys here tonight are drawing from something. Maybe it's alcohol. Maybe it's friendships. Maybe it is drugs. Whatever it may be, maybe you're drawing life from something. And when Jesus comes to you and says, I am the living water, and I am greater than what you're drawing from, we question that. Because what we depend on for the longest time is, that is my source of life. That drug is my source of life. That friend is my source of life. That Whatever it may be that we draw life from, we question that and we say, God, are you truly greater than what I'm struggling with? Are you truly greater than what I'm going through right now? Could you be greater than that, li- that water that I'm drawing from tonight? And he says, I am greater. If you only knew that I am the living water, you would ask and you would always be satisfied. And what he said right here, Uh, verse 15, please, sir. The woman said, oh, excuse me, 13. Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water, I will never be thirsty again. When I talk to some of my friends or my coworkers, or when I talk about Jesus and their journey, and a lot of times they question about Christianity, and they say, you know, it just seems like religious and all that, and I understand that, you know, because there's so much advertisement, there's so many churches everywhere, but one thing that I say is, is Jesus gave a profound answer in this scripture. He said, right here, anyone, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. I want to ask you something tonight. Take a look at your situation. Something that gives you that strength for that moment, if it's alcohol or something that you go to, if it's even vanity or if it's friends or maybe your, your achievements, if you draw life from that, notice one thing, you, you leave back empty. Notice one thing, when you go to that alcohol, when you go to that one thing, you always come back empty. But he says, from me, you will never thirst again. 
You will never thirst again. And here we are tonight. We want to go deeper within Holy Spirit. We want to go deeper in our relationship with God because him, he is the source. Him, he has something for you tonight. And so some of you guys maybe are just wondering and just wanting that to be unveiled to you. You are like, I don't know if he can touch me, me, the one that seems that has everything wrong in my life. But I want to tell you he's looking right at you. He's not looking beyond you. He's looking right at you tonight. Because one thing that as he continues to talk to her, she said, please, sir, the woman said, give me this water. Then I'll never be thirsty again. And I won't have to come here to get water. And he says, go and get your husband. Jesus told her, I don't have a husband. The woman replied, Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Now, that already sounds bad in the modern times. Imagine back then. You know she's outcasted. You know that everyone knows who she is. And one thing that's really funny how he says it, he says, yeah, you are right. I want to focus on that. So many things in our lives, we we don't know how to get right. I know people in my life that literally I watch them go in their life and they're going in circles. They're trying every single thing, every religion. They've tried it all. They tried every single drug even, everything that they could to try to see if that was the answer for them. But what happened was that nothing ever seemed to work. And he said, yeah, you are right. What we end up in our own identity is that the only thing we know that is right is our wrongs. The only thing we do know that is right is our wrongs. That's the only thing that she stood up. She's like, yeah, the only thing she knew what was right was her wrongs. Her life wasn't right. The way she tried wasn't right. Her third marriage didn't work out wasn't right. Her fourth one, her second one, nothing was right. But the one thing that was right was her wrongs. And he came in and he said that, you know what? I'm going to pinpoint the deepest, deepest issue. Because right there, as she was drawing water, she was empty. As she was going on in her life, she was dry. She was dead inside. But he said that you need the living water. And he wanted to give that to her. And as he continued to say that, you certainly spoke the truth. And then she said, sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that, and then uh, we'll we'll skip that. Uh, Go to verse 25. And the woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. You see, sometimes when Jesus speaks to you, I I want to emphasize on this is that we must act. A lot of times we think that we have all of the time in the world to act when he calls. Sometimes he will speak to us in very subtle ways, but he will speak. He knows how to speak to every single one of us differently because we are all different. And so when he speaks to you, we must respond to that. There was that testimony. His name was Ricky Christmas. We showed that last week. And what happened to him, he was going on in his regular life. Nothing major bad happened to his life, but something bad happened to his friend. And what happened to his friend, he saw him die. And he saw his friend die in that casket because they were in a gang group. And he looked at that casket and he saw, wow, that could have been me. And he heard a very quiet voice said that that could be you in the future. But the thing is, is that what did you do with that voice? What did he do? He responded. He responded to knowing that that was God and I need a change. And he responded to that call and he became a pastor and his life was dramatically changed. That's the thing, is that we must respond when Jesus Christ is talking to us. And again, he talks to each and every one of us in a different way. Um, And with her here, she was still questioning one day, as much as it was right in front of her. That's the thing. As much of it was right in front of her, she still said, maybe one day, I will see the Messiah. He's like, I am the Messiah. I'm right in front of you. And when that happened, when that instant instant truth was unveiled to her, look what she did. And a lot of you guys know this story, but on verse 39, 
She goes out, and many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, He told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village, so he stayed for two days, long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves. Now we know that he is indeed the Savior of the world. People will believe in Jesus because of your testimony. People will believe because the thing is, is everyone knew her. That's the thing. Everyone knew who she was. She was that woman who had five husbands. She was that screw up. Okay, that's what was her name. But the amazing thing about God is that he not just changes your life, he changes your name with it. And just with that name, there is a purpose. I want to let you know, if you have a pulse tonight, you still have a purpose. And if some of you guys are here tonight, you are breathing, living, walking. That means you are not dead. You are still here. That means you have a purpose. Amen? And some of you guys are searching for that. And Jesus Christ is the only one that can show you the true potential that you have. Amen? That is him. And I just wanted to share one of the testimonies of this. See, this is a story in the Bible, and some of you guys can be like, yeah, that's amazing, that's powerful. But there's this one young lady in our church, and I was going to just tell her, her her name is Rochelle, and I asked her if I could share her testimony a little bit. And the thing is, is that she came in here not knowing what God had in store for her. And as I walked, because I I was a witness to God's touch in her life. See, she came here empty. She came here looking for an answer. She was at the point of desperation. She was addicted to medication pills. She was addicted to um, just a life that was just, just not in its place. And I'll quote what she said to me the other day. She said, I just sucked at life. I did not know how to just live my life. But when she met Holy Spirit, she's just on fire. She has now the things, she's now motivated to do certain things, to help certain people, that she has now a life that is in order. She's passionate. She's full of life. She came here depressed, and she now is super happy that people ask, what's wrong with you? What has happened? She wears, she wears Jesus Christ on her. And that's what happens when she took a drink of the living waters. That is someone here in our church. That is not just from the Bible, but that is someone here in this place. That when you get touched by God, your life is never the same. Amen? So when you're here and you're saying that, you know, I don't know all things, but I want to let you know one thing is that when Jesus Christ touches you, when he tells you that he has a plan for you, you'll never be the same. And that is our encouragement tonight is that when we are on a search, all of us are here looking for something. All of us are in search to know what is my purpose? What am I in need of? That is what he wants to tell you is him. It's not religion, it's not the basics, but it's him. So tonight when we are here, if you're on a certain area of your journey, I want to let you know that Holy Spirit wants to touch you. It doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't even matter what you're going through tonight. He wants to touch that area. Amen? And you will never be the same. Just like the, uh, that girl that I was just telling you about, Rochelle. She was just coming here with depression, with all of those things, addictions. And they all left by one touch. Amen? So what I want us to do is just take a few moments just to worship our God and just to draw ourselves closer to Holy Spirit. For us to draw closer to Him because He is the living waters.